there is a story making the rounds uh, this week, especially about a Christian pastor in Ohio who decided to house homeless people inside his church because he said they had nowhere else to go. And that sounds really nice, sounds super generous. And then this pastor got in trouble with the law. He was charged with 18 zoning violations by the city of Bryan, Ohio, just outside of Toledo. The guy's name is Chris Avell, A-V-E-L-L. He pleaded not guilty to all those charges. But one reason uh, this got so many headlines everywhere is because, I mean, it seems really awful to punish a pastor who, by all intents and purposes, seems to have done such a kind, nice thing, right? Like, he's trying to help people who have no place to go. He brought them into his church. Like, didn't Joel Osteen get in trouble for not doing that several years ago in Texas, right? Like, why are we mad at this pastor? Here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is from the Christian Post. This is the headline. Ohio pastor arraigned, Christian Post, Ohio pastor arraigned after being charged for housing homeless at church. Like, that sounds horrible. Here's another headline from the Columbus Dispatch. Ohio City targets pastor, targets pastor, who helped homeless stay warm in freezing weather. What's the crime? Which sounds like a very good question. And certainly that's what I saw too. When I saw this story online, I didn't see the story. What I saw was people commenting, well, some guy finally does what Jesus would do and he gets in trouble for it. What, why aren't more Christians acting like this pastor? Christianity would be way better off if more guys were acting like Chris Avell. Um, and that seems very fair. Another blog, Above the Law, which is a legal blog, put the headline this way, Pastor faces charges for giving the homeless a place to sleep. Um, this is also from the Colorado, uh, the Columbus Dispatch. Look at this line. What Avell did seemed like, uh, what Avell did seemed a humane no-brainer. The people needed shelter. Again, makes total sense. Why are we mad at this pastor? He seems to have done everything right. And look, those are all fair points. Homelessness really is a big problem in our country right now. Cities as small as Bryan, Ohio, and as large as San Francisco are struggling to deal with this issue. So of all the people we ought to be mad at, why are we mad at the one guy who actually tried to help the homeless, right? But here's where the red flags start coming up for me. One reason is this right here. Let me show you this. This is First Liberty, which is a conservative legal group. And you can see from this picture, the guy on the right in that uh, jacket looking thing, he is the attorney for First Liberty. The guy on the left in the picture is Chris Avell. Chris Avell is being represented in this case because he is charged with crimes here with the zoning violations. He's being, uh, his lawyers are working for a very right-wing legal group. And that doesn't mean he did anything wrong. That doesn't mean the case is bad or anything like that. But whenever right-wing legal groups take on a case, like you should, your first thought should be, what's the agenda here? That seems maybe shady. And look at how their headline is at First Liberty site. Pastor Arraign charged with criminal activity of opening church 24-7. They're framing this like they went after him for being a Christian. And the other red flag is that Chris Avell, who's on the left of your screen, uh, over there, far left, uh, he appeared, he's doing like the media blitz on conservative news outlets. He was on Fox News. You could see that right there. Ohio pastor faces legal fight for housing homeless. By the way, this is the only time Fox News actually cares about helping the homeless. Look at the headline though. Ohio pastor facing criminal charges every day to house homeless. This is what we are called to do. Again, you could tell they're on board with this guy. They all decided this is the guy we need to defend right here. And again, my point is, it's without knowing anything else, I don't think the pastor did anything wrong. But man, all those red flags go up when you see the right wing propaganda machine really get on this guy's side, because it makes me think there's more to the story. So, of course, I went down a crazy dark rabbit hole this week trying to figure out what's going on. And I did find a handful of things that I thought were pretty interesting um, that I I wanted to share with you. The first one 
has to do with his church. Uh, Cause I want to show it to you. Cause I don't think this was in a lot of stories about this article. Let me show you this. I'm going to go to Google maps here. Let's see if we can work through this together. I'm showing you this, this area. Okay. This is hard to do while I'm trying to play around here. Do you see this thing right here with the red banner? Uh, that is called the sanctuary. That's a le- like next to the red vehicle there. That's the sanctuary. That's an actual homeless shelter that is approved by the city of Bryan. I'm sure they do good work. I have no complaints about it. Well, next door to it, right over here, I'm going to zoom in, is a place. Can you see that? It's kind of hard to read the sign, but way up there, above the word dads there, it says, Crane and Abel's Mini Claw Mania. First of all, very clever name. I approve. But it's basically a video arcade where they have a lot of those machines, a lot of small machines that go like, meh, 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 meh. And you can try to claw your way and grab a prize. It's fine. It's cute. It's a video arcade. But if you remove my face here, you could see the sign in the window. It says, dad's place. Do you see that sign that says dad's? Dad's place. Because the church in question is dad's place. And it's run out of the back of this video arcade. Let me repeat that. This is not like a standalone church. This is a video arcade that the owner of the video arcade said is a church. Which doesn't mean anything's wrong with it. But it means, huh, that's interesting. In 2020, it turns out, Chris Avell requested permission from the city to turn, uh, to set up a church inside his business. The city said, that's fine. But remember, when you, like, took over this lot, this property, it was zoned to you as a business. And that means you still have to follow all business regulations. And he, uh, he was fine with that. Chris Avell said, yeah, sure, I'm going to start my church, but I get it. I got to follow the rules of the business regulations, the zoning laws and all that. Okay, fine. So here's what that means in reality. Because his business is is zoned in the business district, that means you can't have any residential use on the first floor. That means, like, maybe you live near a big city where, like, the street level places are like a dry cleaner or some other shop, but the second floor and third floor are like apartments and that's totally fine. Well, that's the thing. The city of Bryan says if you are in a business district, you can't have residential use on the first floor. People can't be living on the first floor. Also, people cannot eat there. Um, Not like permanently. You can't set up a food place here because it's not that type of business. They can't wash their clothes on the first floor. They cannot sleep on the first floor. Those are the rules here. And when the city's fire chief uh, did an inspection of the church last November, uh, November 21st, he said there were 18 separate violations of the zoning laws that this church slash mini claw video arcade was doing. 18 violations of the rules. That's what he got written up for. And now maybe you're thinking at this point, who the hell cares? None of that matters. These homeless people needed a place to stay. It is very cold outside. This past week, it was bitterly cold in the Midwest, just as it was other parts of the country. And even though there is a homeless shelter next door to the church, they did not have space to take everybody in. So why are we mad at this pastor for just saying, you know what? Come next door, come into my video arcade, and I will set up shop for you in the church. And again, I say, those might be fair arguments to make. I mean, they're certainly compassionate arguments, right? But here's the thing that I think a lot of people are missing. City officials are not going after this guy because he's helping the homeless. They're going after him because he literally put their lives in danger. That's why the city is concerned. It's the same reason, by the way, and I'll show you documentation of this. It's the same reason you can't just set up a soup kitchen on a whim somewhere. You can't just set up shop 
on your sidewalk corner and say, I'm giving food to the homeless like that, even though it might sound nice because you got to make sure everything is safe. The city has an obligation to protect people and like they need to make sure you're serving people food that is like edible and not going to make them sick. And as long as those rules are obeyed, more power to the organizations that do it. I'm going to show. Oh, by the way, before I move on, I found one other thing in uh, Google Maps when I was playing around there, which is that Crane Enables Video Arcade, that that claw place, has one Google review. It is five stars from a year ago. It is from Chris Avell. It's the dude who owns the place. He gave his own business a five-star review and then got out of there. Good for him. I approve. I love that. Okay. So I'm going to show you this thing over here. The city has been inundated with, I'm sure, hate mail. And they released this week, City of Bryan, Ohio, put out a press release. It's 42 pages long. It's so long. They're trying to explain, you guys, we're not trying to attack this dude for no reason. I want to show you one part of it right over here that I think is really worthwhile. Um, Here we go. I'm going to scroll up so you could see this. Here's what the city says is happening. Some of the serious violations included improper installation of laundry facilities, inadequate or unsafe exit areas, LP cylinder for gas grill improperly placed inside the building, an unpermitted gas dryer installed with impermissible plastic duct outside Ohio Mechanical Code guidelines, no permitted and approved kitchen hood over the stove, and limited ventilation. To put that in basic English, the city is saying, we're not like giving this guy a jaywalking ticket. We're saying the violations are literally things like that could put these people in danger if there's an emergency. For example, uh, the exit signs on the door were not clear. And so what happens if there's a reason to panic? What happens if there's a fire in the building and everyone needs to escape? The exit signs were not clearly marked. There's no evidence, the city said, that the carbon monoxide and smoke detectors were tested regularly. The city also said there was a gas leak due to improper installation of the unapproved gas dryer. And by the way, for that last one, the city teamed up with the local natural gas provider to correct that problem by themselves. That's how serious these violations were. The city was like, look, If you want to house these people, that's one thing, but you can't set up a thing that's like a safety hazard that could make this situation even worse. Can you imagine if this pastor took in 20, 30 homeless people into his video arcade and then there was a fire one night and everyone died? Who would be in trouble then? Is it the pastor who took everyone in? No, people would be pissed off at the city for allowing that to happen. And that's why the city is like, we need to make sure the rules are being followed here. They are not. So we got to punish the pastor. And look, I, I'm i sure there are some of you who are saying, well, why doesn't the city find these people a real shelter then? And I think that is a legitimate criticism to have of the city. You could have this criticism of every city. I'm outside of Chicago. We have the same problem in Chicago, which is to say the city ought to be doing more to deal with the homelessness crisis. I am right there with you. But the solution should not be, well, let the homeless people just go next door into a place that is a fire hazard. And the city has an obligation not to let that happen. Um, The police chief, by the way, uh, I, I should say, the fire chief did not say there are 18 problems in this building. I'm going to write you up right now. You're in big trouble. No. He said there are 18 violations. I'm going to give you a month to fix all this stuff if you are going to house these people. And then they checked back in with him on January 9th and January 16th. And the fire chief said we found five violations that have still not been properly corrected And in fact, on January 16th, even though this big stuff had not been corrected, the fire chief found 20 people sleeping in cots on the floor of the building. It was unsafe for those people. The police chief later said, we're only charging this dude with the zoning violations after a reasonable amount of time was given for both the tenant and property owner to fix the issues. Due to the safety of all involved, the city moved forward with filing charges. 
And to me, that kind of makes sense. Avell had plenty of time to correct these safety concerns. He chose not to, which means he's literally putting people's lives in danger by treating his business as a shelter. So like, look, this guy may have had the best of intentions. I don't even think he's a bad guy. Obviously, he's trying to do something to help these people. But the people were more in danger at his mini claw church than they would have been at a place that had proper oversight. And you know where there's proper oversight? At the sanctuary homeless shelter next door. By the way, the city said sanctuary, the homeless shelter, fully complies with the zoning code and fire code. And the city also said we are in contact with the shelter about taking in additional people uh, who are now going to the mini call, uh, claw place. First Liberty, the conservative legal group, says the sanctuary shelter is totally on our dude's side. I just don't trust what First Liberty says. Um, the city also suggested to Chris Avell that there were alternative places he could set up his church if he actually wanted to take in people uh, in a way that was safe and legal. And do you know what Chris Avell said to that? No, I'm not moving my church. I want to stay right here. So again, the city doesn't seem like it's the bad guys here. And I want to show you one other thing that I found extremely disturbing. This is from that same press release that the city released. And you could see here a couple things. One is this is from the police department. Look at the date. It's on the far left there. It says September 30th, 2023. And it basically says a cop went to dad's place church. And look at the second paragraph. Um, I then spoke with Chris. He did confirm he is aware that blank is a sex offender and blank does have permission to be at dad's place. Chris was trying to work with him and find him a place to live. I made Chris aware that blank can't be living out of his vehicle in a city parking lot, which is a long way of saying dad's place. This place that has taken in all these homeless people was knowingly housing a sex offender, which by the way, puts everyone else in that facility in harm's way. Shouldn't we be bothered by that? That seems disturbing. I feel like if a Democrat did that, Republicans would be furious. So, like, look, the bottom line is with this story, the city, as far as I can tell, they are trying to protect people as best they can. Yes, they are not doing enough to deal with homelessness. But in this specific case, I don't know what restrictions they have. I don't know what the laws are, where they live. Maybe they can't do more. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not suggesting I have a solution here. But they're... they're uh, actions right now suggest, look, what we can do is make sure the homeless people are as safe as possible and they're not safe in this dude's place. So the charges against Chris Avell seem warranted. If he wants to run a homeless shelter, good for him, but then he has an obligation to make sure it's run properly uh, and safely for the sake of everyone he's taking in, because this is not something he did for one night that was really cold. It's been several weeks. And the longer he neglects safety precautions, the more likely it becomes that something bad could happen. I guess if there's an upside to what he's doing, it's that maybe the city will build another shelter or take steps toward creating more affordable housing. I guess, I hope. So it's it's hard for me to sympathize with his good trouble, though, when he's openly defying sensible guidelines while creating new hazards for the homeless. Like he might be getting good he headlines, but that's only because a lot of people are not looking into this story. One other side note to this is that HuffPost spoke with Jeremy Dice, who is his lawyer at First Liberty. Uh, and basically, the reporters at HuffPost said, hey, First Liberty, there are some legitimate concerns about this place. What do you say about that? Look at what he said. Dice on Friday, this is last Friday, said the city's statement is full of half-truths and malicious innuendo designed to vilify the most desperate and downtrodden in their community. Yeah, city's fake. They're lying about everything. When earlier asked about the code violations, he dismissed them as a form of lawfare harassment against the church. Every time police visited, Dice said, they presented new nitpicky issues that he believes were designed by law enforcement to be impossible to keep up with. Yeah, nitpicky issues like a gas leak and untested smoke detectors. 
Like, again, this is why you don't trust right-wing legal groups. Like, the city did not make up rules to go after the pastor. The rules were there to make sure buildings have properly functioning parts. So, like, just because this is a church inside a mini arcade doesn't mean it's exempt from fire codes and building regulations. I mean, and the thing that bothers me, First Liberty, why are they backing up this pastor? It's because they are going to fundraise the hell out of it. They're going to tell their donors, we're backing up the hero pastor that everyone loves. Now give us money. We have crypto, whatever they do nowadays. But like for all the money they're going to make off of this guy, they could totally use that money to help him fix the regulations, to help him get the smoke detectors checked and get the smoke hoods that he needs. They're not going to do that. They're like Republicans dealing with the border. They would rather have the problem fester and try to fundraise off of that than doing the bare minimum to fix the problem as best they can. Because, you know, that it would it makes for a better story to say the secular cops are coming after a Christian pastor than to say we don't actually want to help the pastor because we kind of like the headline more. Um, by the way, as of this taping anyway, I just saw this. I think a couple of days ago, uh, First Liberty and Chris Avell have filed a lawsuit against the city of Bryan for coming after him. This is 115 pages, and you could just see it's it's lengthy. They're treating this as like persecution against this guy. I don't know where this lawsuit's going. Uh, I hope the city stands its ground, and I that's the only time I will ever say that about police departments or anything. Like, but the police are right. All this guy needs to do is take care of his place and keep people safe.